Hello everybody, it's time for the answers for DD, Daily Dictation Challenge number 396. It was a little bit long, it was very fast, yes it was tough, but looking at the answers uh, from several of the people on YouTube, you guys did a very, very nice job. Now, this actually comes from a lesson that I teach, uh, one of the lessons that I taught to my students, DDM 135. So if you would like to get the full lesson, uh, there's a, a link in the description section uh, on YouTube that tells you how you can get that lesson. And uh, go ahead and do it. Join DDM. It's fantastic. Actually, get, get the free lessons right up here. www.letsmasterenglish.com slash free. Get those free lessons and then join us. Now, uh, we're going to listen to this challenge. One more time, and then I'll give you the answers. Are you ready? Here we go. But English is also the most widely borrowed from language in the world, meaning that more languages adopt English words into their lexicon than any of the other 41 languages that were included in the study. But English is also the most widely borrowed from language in the world, meaning that more languages adopt English words into their lexicon than any of the other 41 languages that were included in the study. It's really fast, I know, but actually the pronunciation was really good, actually. Okay, so, and again, your answers were really nice, but this was a difficult DD. This was a difficult DD, so let's go ahead and look at the answers here. I'll go slowly, but English is also the most widely borrowed from language in the world. Meaning that more languages adopt English words into their lexicon than any of the other 41 languages that were included in the study. I'll do it again a little bit faster. But English is also the most widely borrowed from language in the world meaning that more languages adopt English words into their lexicon than any of the other 41 languages that were included in the study. Okay, so first of all, we'll talk about pronunciation, then we will talk about meaning. Uh, the red sections, we had lots of problems there for some students, so we're going to focus on the red sections. Let's go. But English is also, we got nice linking, English is also the most, and we can keep the T, the most widely, widely, get that Lee sound there, borrowed from. Okay, so we've made this into an adjective, okay? So, uh, typically, we would say the most widely used language, the most widely written language. But in this case, we're creating a new type of adjective, borrowed from, okay? And we don't say borrow from, borrowed from. To make it an adjective, we need to change the verb into a past participle. That's grammar. It gets really complicated. Don't worry. Let's just focus on the listening. Without the ED, listen, borrow, borrow. With the ED, borrowed. But Americans, we, we stop the D. So listen again. So borrow, borrowed, borrowed. Okay, so I'm going to do number one. You can watch me if you're watching me. Number one is borrow, no ED. And number two, two, two is borrowed with an ED. All right, listen carefully. Borrow, borrow, borrowed, borrowed. Can you hear the difference? Of course, we can hear it because I'm showing you. We can hear there's a stop D sound. And that's what we do in daily English. We stop the D. So with no D, let's let's include from. No D. Borrow from. 
borrow from, borrow from. And now we're going to do the stop D. Borrowed from, borrowed from, borrowed from. And we can hear that, right? The problem is in daily English, we go even faster. So again, really fast. Borrow from, borrow from, borrow from, borrowed from, borrowed from, borrowed from. Okay, so again, the first three were without the ED and the second three were with the ED. So it gets more difficult to hear the difference, right? It's, it's more difficult. So what can you do? That's why I tell my students, if you can say it like a Native American English speaker, then you can hear it. So you need to be able to say it just like me. And if you can do that, Without thinking, without concentrating, just say it, repeat after me, just like me, you're going to start hearing it, okay? Um, so it takes lots of practice. That's why uh, if you join our classes, uh, you, you can join self-study, which is great, just like on YouTube, but I do recommend joining the live classes, and we have classes Every day of the week, different times, not American times, Asian times, European times, American times, Brazil times, whatever, Russia, China, wherever, we're, we're everywhere. Um, and joining those live classes and practicing things like that is really important. Okay, so you should join, join us. So uh, borrowed from, borrowed from language, language in the world. Meaning that more languages adopt, okay, so we got languages, so obviously with the word more, we're going to need an S, so we need to keep that S, and the S is going to link, okay, so more languages adopt, okay, more languages adopt English words, more languages adopt English words, more languages adopt English words, and here I'm using a stop T, adopt English words, adopt English words into their lexicon. Okay, so this is a vocabulary word. I'm guessing most of you did not know this word, lexicon, great word, lexicon. Outside of studying languages in my life, I might have used lexicon two or three times. And not a very common word. But as a language learner, lexicon is a good word. So uh, more languages adopt English words into their lexicon then. Once again, that, so that more gives us a hint to this word too. Okay? And T-H-A-N, than... And T-H-E-N, then, when we say those two words really fast, they sound the same. They typically sound the same. So it's more of a schwa sound. So listen carefully. More languages adopt English words into their lexicon than any, than any, than any. I'm not really saying than any. No, it's, it's much quicker. It's more of a schwa. Than any, and we got good linking here. Than any of the other, than any of the other, than any of the other, than any of the other. Really tough to catch. Uh, many of you missed that. Than, any, than any of the other, the other. American pronunciation, if we have the word the and the next word begins with a vowel sound, we usually say the. Not always, but almost always. So the other is possible, especially in Canada, but in America, the other, the other, the other. Then any of the other, then it, get those THs, then any of the other, then any of the other, then any of the other 41 languages that were included in the study, in the study. Now, one thing I teach my students is this N is a strong sound. And in American English, we have three strong sounds. And one of them is the N. And the TH is a weak sound. And again, we have three weak sounds, and the TH is one of them. So what happens when we have a strong sound and a weak sound? The strong sound can actually cancel, kill the weak sound. 
So we have an interesting situation here and let me grab this. So in the study, what happens is, is this N is gonna cancel the TH and we get the sound like this. And then we switch back, it's gonna sound like this in the study. And there's a question, what about in a study? Okay, so what's the difference there, right? In a study, well, if the N cancels the TH, what's the difference? Well, this is the difference. I'm not joking, the N is really long. So perfect pronunciation, in the, so the N naturally slides to the TH, watch me. In the, I never stopped making sound. I moved my tongue. In the, in the. But again, if the N is a strong sound, it can cancel the TH and we get in the, in the, in the, right? So let's go over here to the yellow section here. And what happens? In the, when we say it fast, in the, in the. In uh, we actually, uh, where's my yellow? I can never see the, there we go. We actually have breakage. In a, in a, in a, in a. Yeah, it's like in a. With the first one, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a. Can you hear the difference? Again, the American, we can hear the difference. Americans, 99.9999999999% of the time will never make a the, a uh, mistake. In the, in a, uh, we can hear it. Why do we hear it? Because we can say it in, in our heads, we can say it the exact same way. So once again, if you can say it, you can hear it. If you can say it like a native American English speaker, then you can hear it. So speaking is really important. So uh, again, I recommend joining our classes. Join Daily Dictation members. Okay, uh, that's it. Uh, I'm gonna say it again. I want you guys to repeat after me, then we're gonna listen, and then I'll do a quick explanation. Here we go. But English is also the most widely borrowed from language in the world, meaning that more languages adopt English words into their lexicon than any of the other 41 languages that were included in the study. But English is also the most widely borrowed from language in the world, meaning that more languages adopt English words into their lexicon than any of the other 41 languages that were included in the study. But English is also the most widely borrowed from language in the world, meaning that more languages adopt English words into their lexicon than any of the other 41 languages that were included in the study. So can you hear it? Yeah, it was fast. It was really fast, okay? Don't worry, our next assignment will also be difficult. Uh, okay, so I'll read it one more time. But English is also the most widely borrowed from language in the world. What does that mean? Meaning that more languages adopt English words into their lexicon than any of the other 41 languages that were included in the study. Okay, so there was a study. Somebody was doing some research. There was a study. And the study looked at 41 languages. Okay, 41 languages. So let's let's just assume. I don't know what language is, but let's let's assume 
Uh, there was uh, Chinese, just a guess, uh, French, and let's just assume Arabic, okay? I don't know. Could be those languages, maybe not, but we'll just assume. So of the 41 languages, three of them were Chinese, French, and Arabic. And what they were doing, they were looking at the languages and they looked at the Chinese lexicon. All of the words that are, that are used in the Chinese language. So the words in a Chinese dictionary, not an ESL, not a Chinese English dictionary, not a French English dictionary, not an English French French English dictionary. No, no, no. As a, a student at school, you look at the French dictionary, you look at the Chinese dictionary, you look at the Arabic dictionary, and they looked at those words, all of the words that regular French people use, all of the words that regular Arabic people use, all of the words that regular Chinese people use, the Chinese lexicon, the French lexicon, the Arabic lexicon. So they looked at all the lexicons of 41 different languages, and they discovered in the Arabic dictionary, for example, they have the word cola, C-O-L-A. But that's not an Arabic word. That's an English word. That comes from English, cola. And in the Arabic dictionary, or the Chinese, we'll go to China. In the Chinese dictionary, they have the word internet. But that's not a Chinese word, that's an English word. And in the French dictionary, they have the word algebra, algebra. But algebra is not an English word, that's an Arabic word. So we, your language, my language is English, we use different words from other countries in our language, right? And here's a picture, uh, and I don't know how well you can see, I'll try and make the picture bigger. I need a pointer here. There we go. Come on, that's not a pointer. There we go. Uh, so, for example, uh, here's uh, some Arabic words that are used in English, algebra, alcohol. Some Chinese words that we use in America, feng shui, yin yang. French words, sabotage, fiancé, resume, village, brunette, restaurant, cliché. Those are French words. German words in English. Do you use these words? Poltergeist, kindergarten, Gesundheit. Greek words. Oh, yeah. Greek words very common in other languages. Telephone, encyclopedia, mathematics, chaos. Italian, diva, scenario, opera, lingua franca, piano, graffiti, pasta, espresso. Yeah. Japanese words. Tsunami, karaoke, I think it's Japanese is karaoke, but in America, karaoke. Portuguese words, banana, marmalade. Hmm. Russian words, vodka, vodka, cosmonaut. Spanish words, mosquito, macho, gorilla, maybe guerrilla, but in America, guerrilla, okay? So, so these are Spanish words but you will find them in an American dictionary. These are Russian words, but you'll find them in an American dictionary. So the American English dictionary borrows words from many, 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 many languages. We borrow all of these words from different languages. But your language, if you're Chinese, or if you're French, or if you're Arabic, your language also borrows words. And that's what this study was doing. They were studying which languages borrow the most words, which languages borrow the most words from English. And they discovered that, uh, uh, from which language? And they discovered that English, and I was surprised, is the most widely borrowed from language in the world. So you guys know, you guys are studying English and you know that in America, in American English, we sometimes have French words and Greek words and Spanish words and German words. You know, American English, we're always borrowing words, right? You know that. 
But actually, other languages borrow a lot of English words too. So it's just an interesting research. You know, nobody's right and nobody's wrong. It's just very interesting research. And that's all it is. That's all it is. And I had no idea that English is also the most widely, in this case, commonly, widely, everywhere, commonly, very, very common, borrowed from language in the world. And again, meaning that more languages adopt English words into their lexicon than any of the other 41 languages that were included in this. So the Chinese people adopt 100 English words, uh, 90 French words, 70 Arabic words. That's the idea. English is the number one language. English words are the number one adopted language in Chinese. That's what the study says. Okay. I don't know if that's true, but interesting. That's it. So this, again, uh, this is from DDM 135. Uh, and it was a, a long article, a great article. Very interesting. Uh, if you like studying languages, good stuff. And uh, that's it. So uh, we've got another DD daily dictation challenge. DD 397 is ready for you. Good luck on that assignment. And I will give you the answers uh, very soon. Do your best. Put your answers up on YouTube in the comment section down below. And again, get our free lessons, www.letsmasterenglish.com slash free. Uh, and we have a, a newsletter going out. If this is 2019, every day, Monday through Friday, I'm sending out a daily English uh, lesson in the email. So if you can sign up for that, that's excellent. It's free. Uh, I recommend Gmail, Yahoo.com, or Hotmail. Those are the best. If you use email from your country, uh, sometimes we have problems. So if you have a Gmail or Yahoo Mail, uh, American email, especially rocket mail, hot mail. Those seem to work very good. All right. That's it guys. Take care. Good luck on the next assignment. Bye-bye.